This video is an overview of FilterStorm 4 on iPad. Let's open up a photo. Uh, okay, so um, the interface is broken down to these buttons and these tabs. The buttons are from top to bottom, uh, load and close image. We have uh, automations, which are uh, saved sets of actions that you can uh, perform to, on an image. So if I edit this image, I could save an automation and then open up another image and use the automation to uh, apply the same set of changes to that image. We have our history. Uh, this is info pane. We can set uh, metadata here. And uh, if you t uh, tap on the about link, there's links to download uh, some more automations on the website. Uh, and it's our export button. And then the tabs are uh, canvas tab, which are uh, changes to the image. They resize it, they add borders, things like that, rotate. Now we have filters, which are things like changing brightness, contrast, blurring, sharpening, uh, noise reduction, things like that. Uh, and these are the ones that can be applied via masks. And we have our layers tab. Uh, I'm just going to turn layers off. They're off by default, actually. Uh, there's a separate video uh, detailing using layers. So first, let's go through some of the Canvas tools. Start with cropping. Um, so cropping is fairly straightforward. You pinch and swipe the image around uh, to fit it within this box. And um, so when you hit the check button, it'll just crop to everything in the uh, everything visible inside of the box. You can drag the lines to uh, change the size, or you can come here and choose one of the built-in standard sizes. I'm just going to hit the X button to cancel out of that. We can rotate. You can straighten the image. Let's just reset that. Uh, you can add a border. Uh, it won't apply to hit the add border button. I'm just going to hit this reset button up here to take that off. Let's go to filters. Uh, so most of these filters work with sliders like this. Um, you can drag the slider from anywhere. You don't have to touch the marker. You can just put your finger down and move up or down. Uh, you can use this button here to change where the preview goes. So it can be on the right, left, or on the whole image. Let's just close out of that for now. Um, most of them work somewhere. You have saturation here. You can change the color balance. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my curves tool. If you don't know how curves work, there is a uh, text explanation on the help page of the website. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the curves down. Use RGB to... Um, I'm going to set it so that the sky is uh, the way I like it, so I want it darker. Put on the whole image, the preview on the whole image. So if I hit the check button here, it'll um, apply it to the whole image, and this will be what the resulting image looks like. Um, but I don't want to do that because I'll lose, you know, I don't want the sky divers to be black. Um, so I'm going to hit the brush button in order to bring up the masking tools. Um, we have a bunch of different masking tools we can brush. Just erase that. We can use gradients. Uh, we have circular gradients, inverse circular, and we have different linear configurations. I'm going to cancel that for now. Uh, this is the color range picker. It'll uh, change, select whatever color is underneath the uh, loop, and then apply it to everything of the color. Simple opacity slider and uh, a vignette controller. Now I'm going to take a gradient. I'm going to use an inverse circular gradient. Let's put it here and go like that and apply. Um, now I'm going to take my eraser uh, just because I don't want to lose the uh, detail on the skydivers. Let's just turn that, make it a bit smaller, even smaller perhaps. And just go on. There we 
go. And I'll just apply that. Check button. So I can do the same thing. Use my curves again. This time I'm going to use the luminance curves. Um, and instead I'm going to uh, expose for the uh, parachute. And again, apply with mess. This time I'm going to take a brush, make it big again, and just brush onto the parachute. Extend out a bit more. If I go past like I did there, just erase it and apply that. So it looks much, much better. I had a dirty sensor that day though. You can see a bunch of spots. So I can take my clone tool here and clean those up. I guess I should. Okay. Basically, it just takes uh, the point under the loop as a source and then copies whatever is under the loop onto where your finger is. There we go. Let's apply that. And there we have an edited image. Now, when we want to uh, export it, we tap the export button and um, oops, that one should delete. Um, yeah, you can tap and hold to change settings on one of the uh, export destinations. And you can tap to select the places you want to send it to. So if I want to send it to the photo library, I just tap this uh, top one and hit the export button. I can change settings in here, the uh, maximum processing size, the JPEG quality. Um, and if I want to add a new destination, I hit the plus button here. I can make it a new FTP location. I can give it a name. And I can set up uh, the address folder username and password. And it all works like that. So I just did that, hit export, and it'll process the image and send it off. That's my demonstration.